Good morning and welcome to Leon County today with Sheriff Walt McNeil. Sheriff, a, a great show we have here with us today, our superintendent for Leon County Schools. You know, we're several weeks into the school year now and, you know, I don't think people realize just how much preparation goes into gearing up for a new school well, year. Well, Sean, I can tell you that uh, Superintendent Hannah and his team uh, work uh, all during the summer trying mm -hmm. to get ready for the reopening of schools and we're right there with them trying to make sure that uh, we have a school year that starts off smooth and ends smoothly. Right. And that's a lot of moving parts, quite honestly, to make all, make all that happen. And uh, I think we do a tremendous job of that. But we're going to talk in more detail today mm -hmm. with uh, our superintendent to get some real details about how we respond to emergency situations and what the re relationship is between the Leon County Sheriff's Office and our, our school system. Absolutely. We know that school security is, uh, security is top of mind for a lot of parents out there in our community. Um, and the collaboration is key, especially with our school resource deputies. Well, we have to. We have to uh, communicate, communicate, communicate particularly trying to make sure that our kids who are coming to school, we have uh, kids who come in all varieties. Some come, their parents drop them off, some mm -hmm. walk to school, some bicycle to school, and all those various uh, means of transportation has an impact on the school and on our, res on our school resource deputies as well. So we've got to make sure we're, we're talking, not only about the routine stuff, but about the, uh, the major things as well. How do we coordinate in, in response to uh, a person who's presented himself as a danger on our, our campus. How do we then deal with those circumstances? And we'll talk more about that today with uh, Superintendent uh, Rocky Hanna. Absolutely, and then the other component is, uh, you know, we just uh, newly launched our Council on the Status of Men and Boys with the new Executive Director, and our school system, a very important component to that. Oh, absolutely. We could not do what we're trying to do without the school board and uh, our superintendent being completely on board with what we're talking about. We're talking about looking at uh, those persons who are either being expelled from school or placed in second chance schools, if you will. And uh, that's a space we think we can get in and work to reduce some of the violence we see on our streets and to get these kids in a better place. So I'm really interested in uh, hearing what we got to talk about today because I think it's going to make a difference here in Leon County. Yeah, very important for sure. Well, we want you all to stick around. We have a full show with you all today. and We're checking in with Superintendent Rocky Hanna coming up after the break. Good morning, everyone. I'm Jimmy Goodman with the Leon County Sheriff's Office, and this is your Crime Tip Tuesday. How to protect yourself when walking alone. Time's changing again. A lot of people are waking up early in the morning to get their exercise before they go to work. Here's a few tips to make sure you're safe. Avoid the dark, vacant, and deserted areas and use well-lit, well-traveled routes. Avoid the dark hours if you can. Always carry a flashlight with you and your cell phone. Dress in reflective clothing and comfortable shoes which will not hamper movement. If you think you're in trouble, move away from that person or that threat if possible. Join any group of people nearby. If they're across the street or in front of you, increase your pace. Have a great week. Be safe out there. Welcome back. Joining me now is Superintendent of Leon County Schools, Rocky Hanna. Rocky, before we get talking about security, Let's talk about, uh, this is your second term, you're well into it. Uh, what are some of the expectations and what are some of the things you guys have, have accomplished there at, uh, at our school system? Well, I appreciate the question. I, I, without a doubt, COVID, uh, how we handled and reacted to COVID uh, in order to keep our school safe uh, and open, keep our children healthy, uh, that would probably be the, the greatest accomplishment. Uh, we, none of us saw it coming. Yeah. Yeah. But it was uh, incumbent upon me that we were ensure that our schools were open and our kids were safe each and every day coming to school, as well as our employees. What we accomplished in the summer of 2020 was really nothing short of amazing. To uh, uh, meet parents and families where they were, we had 50% of our children that were physically in school, 50% that were at home, and we were trying to teach both simultaneously and get computers to every kid, make sure every family had access to the internet, and provide meals for children and oh um, the technology they needed to access remote learning. It was just, it was a big lift, it's, but it's something I'm extremely proud of. Wow, I mean, Rocky, you guys did a tremendously great job. I, I, I remember those times and I remember the conversations going on in our community, but I can tell you everybody was behind you trying to make sure that uh, we supported you in every possible way. Now, you know, we've, uh, I mean, you've been a big part of our uh, Council on the Status of Men and Boys. Uh, we just kicked that off. You guys were a funding agency for us, mm -hmm. uh, getting that started. Uh, how important is the collaboration uh, aspect of uh, working with our kids, particularly kids who are perhaps uh, in harm's way as it relates to being involved in violence? Well, first, I just want to thank you, Sheriff, for your leadership. This would not have happened without you, and I mean that sincerely. 
Um, you, like I, care deeply for this community. Uh, we're, we're troubled by some of the, some of the violence that we've seen, especially with our, with our young folks. And I think this is a step in the right direction to have more interventions in place and adult role models and mentors that can work with these, with these kids uh, so they don't turn to the streets and turn to violence. Uh, but I give you a, 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 all of the credit. We are proud, Leon County Schools and the school board, to be a part of this initiative. We're, we're very excited about uh, Mr. King and his leadership, yeah. what he'll bring. Uh, he has a proven track record of working with this demographic, with working with this population of kids, and um, just excited about what the future will bring for us to partner, collaborate with each other, to identify kids that may be in crisis, to get them the help they need. Yeah. yeah thank you, Rocky. I certainly appreciate that. But the, the most important thing there is we're working together. And that, yeah. that's how we get anything done in this community, all working together. Now, the, uh, the data that we got from the Inagua Homicide Report basically told us that uh, we need to focus on those kids being suspended. I know you've got your truancy officers. You've changed the name, and mm -hmm. they're doing a different function. But how important is that data in terms of our being able to have some impacts on the specific kids that are in harm's way, you might say? Yeah, I think it's extremely important. And like you said, it's us working and collaborating together and sharing of information and sharing of resources to identify kids that you see in neighborhoods yeah. and that, that uh, come through your department and, and kids that we see in our schools is, is sharing that information uh, with each other to uh, ensure that no kids are falling through the cracks. I think that's going to be vitally important. And again, uh, so many times uh, people play the blame game. Yeah. That's not my problem. That's right. someone else's problem. Right. No, it, 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 it's, it's a community problem. Yeah. It's a community issue. And it's uh, our school system working with the sheriff's department and city government and county government. And now the creation uh, of this new council is, I think, only going to, uh, to benefit uh, especially those young people, to, to, to give them uh, a shot at having a successful future. Well, Rocky, I tell you, we, we could not do it without that partnership. Thank you so much, Superintendent. Up next, how our schools prepare for emergencies. Stay with us. We're back with Leon County School Superintendent Rocky Hanna. Superintendent, we recently partnered for a drill to reunite families uh, at our schools. Uh, talk about how important that drill is and, and why we do those drills every year. Yeah, it's a vital important, Sheriff. You know, the, the world has changed since we were kids. And unfortunately, you see these tragedies, uh, most recently in Uvalde and Parkland yeah. and Columbine. And it's incumbent upon us to work with uh, emergency agencies such as the Sheriff's Department, Police Department, uh, EMS, to be prepared, as prepared as we can uh, heaven forbid something like that happens on one of our campuses. And I just, again, uh, thank you for your leadership, for organizing uh, the, the simulation we had at one of our large high schools the other day. It was, it was very eye-opening, but it was, it was also emotional. Yeah. Uh, a, a number of our employees, the principal took place, the administration team, and uh, to make it as real as we possibly could. And that, because we made it so real, it, it became real and yeah. became an emotional event for them. Uh, I think we, we gleaned a lot, we learned a lot, um, but uh, again, heaven forbid something like that happen, and we just want to ensure that we are as prepared as we possibly can, and we are relying on you guys to, as the cavalry yeah. to come to the rescue, and, uh, but it's us uh, coordinating and communicating uh, while you're on our campuses as to uh, what's exactly taking place and what's the appropriate action uh, to, uh, to bring that crisis to, a, to, a, to an end. Yeah, one of the things you all have in place is the ability to communicate back to the families of the kids there on campus. Talk about that system and how it works and, uh, and what, what kind of success have you had with it? Yeah, we do. We use multiple outlets. I mean, again, the, the world's changed. With yeah. kids with cell phones today, the information is, is you know, uh, immediate. And so uh, parents are aware of situations on our campuses even at, sometimes before I am because of the technology and, and kids in their, in their smartphones. Uh, but we do have the ability through uh, listserv or text messages or voice messages to get uh, information out to people, uh, especially our parents who are uh, you know, rightfully so worried and concerned when an event happens or uh, in the community or at a, at a school site, that we have the ability to share accurate information as to what's going on and be as transparent as possible as far as our response. 
Yeah, Rocky, this, uh, this school year has started out relatively good. Uh, well, compared to the last two years, yeah. <laughs> yeah absolutely. <laughs> yes. And uh, the coordination of getting kids back to school. Uh, talk to our audience about wh how important is the role of our uh, resource deputies there at the school, school resource deputies. Oh, it's extremely important. Yeah, the, the school uh, resource deputy program dates back to my senior year at Leon High School. Yeah. Sheriff <laughs> Boone had just been elected into office and uh, came up with this idea of infusing uh, his agency and now your agency, the Leon County Sheriff's Department, into our schools, uh, not, not only from a law enforcement standpoint, but, but just as importantly to teach kids and to work with kids and to build healthy relationships with young yeah. people. Um, so I think this 40-year partnership has been absolutely amazing and it's vitally important. And I, uh, as, a, as a longtime school administrator and principal, uh, valued the deputies uh, that I had the opportunity to work with uh, at, at Leon and all that they did to develop relationships with our kids to try to keep them on track and and uh, because the, the people in your department are so respected and held to such high esteem that at times they can get through to kids that uh, that otherwise you couldn't penetrate. Yeah, yeah I talk to our deputies, uh, school resource deputies all the time and they talk about those relationships, uh, those bonds they have with kids when they meet them on, on, our, on our campuses those bonds last for a lifetime. They go and talk about, I've seen him uh, get seen in a mall or in a shopping center, and that kid comes to him and says, you are my school resource deputy. Real quickly, we've got about one minute left. Talk about uh, how, how important is it to get the information out to our parents in, in terms of our safety at our schools? Yeah, and I need to kind of jump back on the, the emergency contact information. So uh, we I have to strongly encourage our parents to keep that information updated. So as phone numbers changes, address changes, uh, that you are going in to uh, to focus our student information system and updating that information so we can uh, ensure that we're calling the right numbers and we're reaching out to the people uh, that need to be called. Uh, but communication with parents is of vital importance yeah. and having that healthy relationship between a school and, and a child's parent to, do, uh, to uplift and support them throughout the process. Well, thank you, Superintendent. Just ahead in our Deputy on Duty segment, Behind the scenes look at security measures for transporting inmates to and from the Leon County Detention Facility. Stay tuned. On this week's Deputy on Duty, we explore the inner workings of how the Leon County Detention Facility manages inmate transports through the eyes of a longtime employee with a lot of insight. The vast majority of my career, uh, almost 16 years, was in uniform patrol. Well, you're doing everything from, you know, going to school to talk to some kids or you know, helping a couple through, you know, a custodial dispute or working a death investigation. Deputy Daniel Smallridge is now approaching his 17th year with LCSO and after years of working on the road, he wanted to explore something new without leaving the agency. Just wanted to change and I talked to some guys up here in judicial. They really enjoyed it. So I came up here in July of last year and then transitioned down here into the transport unit in about September and I've been in transport since then. I've thoroughly enjoyed it. Um, it's a good group of guys that I work with. That support is crucial because the transport unit is a small close knit group with a major role in the judicial and criminal justice system. Generally, we are responsible for transporting inmates from the Leon County Detention Facility to the Leon County Courthouse for hearings. And while it sounds simple, inmate transport can sometimes get really complicated. The process requires a lot of coordination with confidential protocols to ensure the safety of everyone involved between all of the impacted locations. Making sure that they're secure, they're safe, they're here on time, we're bringing the right people, and then when it's our, you know, time to take a trip, you know, it's our responsibility to put that trip together, find out where we need to go, when the drop needs to be made, um, when we need to get there, we're getting the right people. And so just putting it all together. The days normally start bright and early for the transport unit and sometimes last late into the night. There are some long 14, 15, 16 hour days um, on the road. And that means sometimes traveling the entire state of Florida and many times all across the country. We've also taken care of all of the extradition. So we go anywhere in the country as long as it's green lighted for us to go get an individual. 
we'll do that trip and it's generally a flight. Um, we've been everywhere from New York to Seattle. And that change of pace from working in uniform patrol to now is just the spark Small Ridge needed to pique his interest in something new. He wanted to make sure he had a long lasting career with the Leon County Sheriff's Office. Working on the road, um, I wasn't a part of a lot of trials. And so now um, being up here, it kind of opens your eyes to some of the inner workings of, you know, how the prosecution works versus the defense and um, angles they play, rules of litigation, things that can be talked about, things that can't be talked about. Um, someone says something and all of a sudden an attorney's jumping up declaring a mistrial and it's just it's just fascinating. It's like it's like chess, you know, and it's uh but I love it. Small Ridge's perspective is just one of the many opportunities available at the Leon County Sheriff's Office. You can learn more about the different positions and how to apply right now on our website, leoncountyso.com. I'm Angela Green for Leon County Today. Welcome back to Leon County today with Sheriff Walt McNeil and Sheriff uh, hearing from Deputy Smallridge. He, he's been with our agency for a while now and, and really done a lot of facets of the office. Well, you know, I, I can't say enough about uh, deputies that are really all in to everything we do and getting out there and engaging with our community. Uh, this is just one example of the kind of deputy he, he is mm -hmm. and other deputies are in our, our Leon County Sheriff's Office. It's, I'm, I'm flattered every day that I, I, I'm, I'm honored every day to come in to work with people like we're talking about here today. Yeah, I remember yeah. a few years ago um, he went viral for his interaction with a little kid in our community um, and how he um, interacted with him. But now he's with our transport unit and that is a vital role. You know, people don't think a lot about the security of transporting uh, inmates from one location to another. Yeah, that's uh, that's a tough job too. Mm -hmm. People think of it uh, as just transporting from detention facility to the courthouse. Uh, uh, but oftentimes we have to go to other states and to other uh, cities around the state of Florida and bring people back. And, and while we're doing that, obviously the, the opportunity for those persons to try to escape and those kind of things are, are real. Mm -hmm. And so uh, it takes a very special person to do that kind of job. And uh, obviously uh, he loves it because he keeps doing it. <laughs> he does indeed. And then, of course, Superintendent Hannah joining us today, really talking about the collaboration. And, you know, I know this is one of those topics when parents hear it, they turn the TV up because, you know, the, we say it all the time, our children are our most precious resource. That relationship is vital. It is absolutely vital. And uh, our superintendent, is, uh, is a rock star, quite yeah. honestly. He does a great job taking care of our kids and uh, just trying to make sure that the information gets out to our citizens, to mom and dads out there, of how he's trying to and we're trying to, in a collaborative environment, mm -hmm. make sure that our kids are safe. At the end of the day, that's what it's all about, keeping the Leon County community safe and making sure we don't have situations take place here like we've seen in other places across this country. Yeah, doing a great job and a great job to our deputies too as well yes. in our schools. Yeah. All right, thank you, Sheriff. Thank you. Thank you all for joining us for another episode. We'll see you back here next week.